Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi thank you so much for the teachings about the four companions and their haruf and it's beautiful that they support us each day with the sunnah can you please share something about Imam Hussain alayhi salam regarding this? Oh uh, what we just talked about that uh, the support is eternal. So I think we get the, the, the gist of the last month's talks are based on manners. So if anybody hearing us for the last few years, I think they would come to the assumption that this type of knowledge was achieved by this individual based on what he's focusing on is called manners. Those whom focused on their fiqr and focused on this or that or whatever they think they're focusing on, if it didn't open these types of knowledges then they should figure out something else because maybe it's just not working for them. But this path, this way, this fountain, don't assume every shaykh is the same fountain. So we heard from you now we're going to now go click on every other shaykh and every other Naqshbandi shaykh they must all have these same fountains. It's not a dime store where you go anywhere and it's the same. These are very rare realities and very rare to find in these days. It's but by the grace of Allah that He's granted this uh, gift and uh, this is you know it's not, it's not everywhere. So if you're understanding and you came to this oasis then you'll understand that the source of this oasis is based on good manners. So when we have good manners and good character then the immensity of this world of light opens, right? So that with good manners you carry your sunnah until one day your sunnah talks to you and holy companion appears and says that, I'm the asa that you carry and I'm the support. And when Prophet wants to send his support and when Allah asked Nabi Musa, what, what is this asa in your hand? He said, oh, I'll lean on it, I guide my flock with it and I have some other things I can do with it. Means that this was a description of uh, support, amdad, a, a support that comes for the servant that lean on me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I'll be there for you to make sure that your path is straight, your walking is straight, your character is straight. And uh, everything else that was described. So it's based on good character. It's not something you, you come across in a fiqh book and you, you read and read and read and you, you this all of a sudden this will come up. These are based on good manners and the people of good manners Allah opens to them from His bounty and it never ends. As much as you go deeper Allah has infinitely more in the depth of these realities. So we pray that with good manners and good character and, and love Allah keeps us within the school and to keep us diving deeper into the realities. But shaitan's not happy with that. So that's the purpose of shaitan is to take away the good manners, send somebody to backbite, send whisperings into the hearts and into the minds of people and that's the only purpose is to lose the good manners and fall from grace. And that's what happened, that was the event now that we came to Karbala. How could they possibly, if, if they don't know me and you 
and they're willing to kill me and you, that's no problem, we're nobody. How they don't know who Imam Hussain was? That they're all lined up, they're making all their salahs, they even break in the middle of killing all this family. They break for Salatul Asr before they killed Imam Hussain after they had slaughtered the whole family. They said, now it's time for Salatul Asr, they call Azan, they pray in Jama'at, Salatul Asr, give tahiyyat, Salaamu Alaykum Ayyuha Nabi. And as soon as Salah finished, they went to go kill the grandson. So, what enters into the hearts and minds of people that they could do that? And it can't be that they had good manners, so we can assume it's a lack of good manners that somebody could do something like that. But they could have been very learned, scholastic, you know, they could have maybe had a lot of understanding in jurisprudence. But if they lack good manners, well then that's how atrocities begin, calamities begin and you know, ticket to people's own punishment comes by the lack of good manners. So we are our worst enemies. If we allow shaitan within us and shaitan around us and then our character will go. InshaAllah Allah dress us and bless us and grant us the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why it's so important to keep doing what we do. The well that you make, the food that you give, the drink that you serve. All these beatific actions of muhabbat and love, they grant us like an insurance policy that when your premium is paid, your policy covers you. Means the good deeds and actions that we do are covering us from we have no idea what type of difficulties may be coming towards us. And all of a sudden you do a good deed and it stops a calamity from coming, it stops a from attacking because Allah is happy with the servant. The sincere belief is they take every opportunity that Allah grants to them to do good deeds and good actions as a protection so they go day by day, day by day. So every day they try to do good, every day they try to do a little bit better so that their policy doesn't lapse and that they don't fall into the oceans of calamity. InshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah There was a video recently that one of our shaykhs was saying that Imam Hussain was taken and a duplicate was left in physical form. Can you speak a little bit about this? Best for now to stick with the storyline. So, best to think about what events happened and to have sorrow within the heart and to understand the event for what it is. Spiritually, there are many other realities. So, but we don't want to go into that because it hardens the heart of people and then say, well then they don't have to be sad, they don't have this, that's not of any benefit to think like that. But how Allah can do whatever Allah wants to do. So. Best to leave it at that, inshaAllah, that the calamities that occurred and the difficulties that happened, the fact that the actions of the people, they didn't know that anything been exchanged or not. They were trying to kill Imam Hussain as salaam, they killed all the family, they did all of these calamitous acts. So best to focus on the lesson being given based on that. Not the fact that the people vanished and they're not there and it didn't happen to them, it happened to them. Now if Allah relieved that the last moment the pangs of death that's something different from the knowledge of awliya. 
But the isharat is the general lesson that should be understood, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, related to your talk yesterday, what is the secret and the hikmah behind Allah bringing together the lineage of jinn and insan together in bloodline of Imam Hussain alayhi salam? Do insan with lineage of jinn have different abilities and or realities than pure insan? Jinn wa ins, this has been the history of our creation that uh, there is no pure bloodline, there's always a mix. So it's the jinn reality within them that gives them these knowledges and these realities from their world. We said described before is the genius and the quality of genius, what did that meant? is that they had the abundance of a jinn reality within them. Means that they are of a subtle nature and as a result of their subtle nature they're able to communicate with subtle energies. So they have a more subtle reality, it's best to understand it that way. And Jinn nations are in a continuous attempt to overtake humanity. So I think now on, on Disney there's an actual series in which based on they've overtaken humanity and they literally show that 90% of humans have been overtaken by these different species and they shape shift, they change themselves like humans when no one's looking they go back to the image of their jinn reality. I think it's uh, Amongst Us or uh, some new show about that. But now more and more of these will be discussed because this is what they want to reveal. We said by the time the what they call Messiah and the Dajjal and Antichrist, we don't have Antichrist because we're not waiting for Christ but the deceit that coming is based on the jinn world. The medicines they give to people are not to cure any sicknesses but to become more tolerant of their antibodies and their realities so that they can possess and occupy and, and, and cohabitate with people. So they have always been doing that, it's just now coming into the light and learning all these realities. So at the same time Allah has bloodlines that are related to very powerful mu'man tribes in which they have sultans and they have uh, very big nations and those nations come close to the Ahlul Bayt and to those whom Allah placed the favour and they're close to their bloodline and they support them, they're all around them and they guard them. And this is by Allah's izzat and might and, and this is the oceans of reality that flow through them and this is uh, necessary for these days that are coming. If you think that the evilness is the only one whom can you know support well then they have something as a surprise coming for them. Allah's support is for His heavenly kingdom is far greater and far more powerful. So this is the practices of uh, meditation and contemplation making everybody to become more subtle and more understanding of energies and less frightened from energies and that's what's important. So you have to become familiar with energy, the energy movement and the flow of energy to come towards you. And that's why it's done with the muraqabah and uh, specifically mentioning the shaykh's names, connecting with your shaykh who you know and who you communicate and whom you have a good understanding, you see all the time. So there's a familiarity. So you're not trying to connect with someone you've never seen before, you're trying to connect with the shaykh that you see all the time, a familiarity, his sound is familiar, the image is familiar as a result of connecting and then asking for their madad and their support then begins to open up that portal. And that was in the talks of the portals, so if people tune in now go back to the talks on the portals and Islam is all portals. So when sci-fi people are saying, oh is there portals in Islam? It's a, all of Islam is portals. Prophet described every zikr 
is a portal to paradise, Ashab al-Kahf was a portal, uh, the maqam of Sayyidatina Maryam salam was a portal. All of, all of these stories that Allah is giving to us, if we bring it right now into today's time we now understand these were portals. Uh, energy of a dimension other than our dimension. Sayyidina Musa salam saw a fire, entered into a portal and this was a dimension in which Allah spoke to Sayyidina Musa salam. So it's everywhere in Qur'an but it requires the meditation and contemplation and the support. And we said that the Ashab al-Kahf was a big understanding and the tariqahs based on Ashab al-Kahf and the Surat al-Kahf. So imagine then the importance, the shaykhs then are portals to this Divine reality. They carry between dunya and barzakh uh, intermediary and an energy that take you from your dunya station into the barzakh and to your heavenly reality. So the shaykhs themselves they serve as a portal, shaitan has to make a machine to do that with the permission of his ifrit that take from dunya energy, right? Because they don't have knowledge of a book. That's when Sayyidina Sulaiman had the two choices to bring the throne. The freed said, I'm going to bring it, it takes time. But the one whom had knowledge of the books, the awliya said, by the time your eyes moved it appeared and he duplicated the throne and brought it to his presence. That knowledge is only for the heavens because it has to come with Izzatullah, the might of Allah and by the will of Allah that's why good manners, then muraqabah, all the connections, the love and the connection to the Sultan Sayyidina Muhammad and the good manners. As a result then they draw near to these portals and begin to open up these energy fields and Allah's grace within those fields and the different beings within these fields and what they want to dress humanity with and what they want to guide humanity with what to avoid and what to look forward to. Now they had a disclosure and they came forward and they said, oh, oh, oh yeah by the way these ships that were appearing many of them were taking people to dimensions within this earth not outside. So the ships don't necessarily take you outside but they go into the jinn dimension here inside. And we said before it's like layering, when you use adobe and graphic arts it's called layers. This earth and our existence may have infinite layers by Allah's might. So they go into these layers and these vibrations and they use these crafts and they don't even need the craft to take somebody into that layer. The people whom are using drugs and artificial means ayahuasca and all, all this other garbage these people are taking is to take their mind into that dimension. And the danger for that is that these jinn can capture the person's mind and they'll render their physicality in a catatonic state where you would see them locked. They can't come out of that physicality and the jinn will have taken the mind of that person into their realm and they become catatonic. So the danger, immense dangers that these people are playing with these realms and not understanding them. And that's all shaitan wants. Shaitan looks at a room of a hundred people as a hundred enemies and that if these people ever reach their reality like in a chess game or checker game that each one man who becomes a real man for Allah becomes a who man, he has a power of a thousand men. Imagine what a thousand men can do. One man if he becomes rijal, shaitan knows he'll become like a thousand men. So one by one he has an incentive to destroy them. He's not interested in them growing their beard, growing their sunnah, reaching their reality and saying, checkmate. So he's clever, he's been here many, many years. So he'd rather have you in a dress and you know, thinking you're Barbie because then you're not going to be any threat to him and most likely he'll kill you very fast. So 
there's something happening, it's not a coincidence. Nothing is happening by chance, it's all been written, there's a battle taking place. And so the believer has to believe, have to begin to follow the sunnah, follow the shari'ah, have the love of Prophet begin to meditate, contemplate, why? So that these portals open and that these energies begin to flow and the guidance begin to flow within the hearts of people. Otherwise they're left alone to other portals and other energies that will open which would be their TVs, their, their music, everything in their home is going to be a portal. When people see what kind of energy comes through their television and how they can't stop the energy and can't send it back. So it means everything around us is, is, is now conducting energy. So how are we going to protect ourselves, how are we going to build ourselves and how are we going to defend ourselves with energy, inshaAllah. We have a lot of videos on these subjects so people go back to the videos and and watch all these videos, watch all these teachings, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa mm, I've been reading uh, Timeless Reality, I'm on page 78, I'm doing the meditations, doing all the zikrs as mentioned, but I feel that I'm accelerating to the negative instead of positive yet I will not give up. Do you have any advice? I don't think you can accelerate to the negative if you're meditating. <clears throat> so if you meditate, contemplate, give charity, keep your wudu, do everything that's been written in the book, there's no way to go down, you only can go up. So it's a matter of as soon as you start doing your practices you feel an attack. So. It's not about going down. So you go to doctor's office, doctor says, hmm, how do you feel? You say, I feel great. Says, I got some news for you, I'm really sorry. Say, what? You have cancer. Say, what? Yeah, you have cancer. It's stage, stage three. And you're like, what are you talking about? I feel really great. I said, no, but through our medical exam you have cancer. And as soon as you take your medicine all of a sudden you start getting sick, you're throwing up. You say, I wasn't feeling like that before. Because you have a sickness that you don't know exists within you and it's cohabitating with you like a parasite. It just loves and it goes about with you everywhere so that not to draw any attention to itself. As soon as we make, we come into tariqah new, we start doing zikr, start calling madad. Some people bought a taweez and said, we bought this taweez for a very spiritual lady, older lady. We put on her screaming, howling, yelling, take it off me, take it off me. Is there something wrong with the taweez? I said, no, there's something wrong with that lady. Don't think that everyone doing charms and doing things is actually doing it for Allah That taweez is very powerful from the shaykhs. So she was using nefarious beings to bring favours to people to break people's relationships, to bring people businesses that weren't due to them. Those are nefarious beings she's made deals with and of course that tawi is going to, you know, it's going to be like an exorcism, <laughs> the same thing. So as soon as we're doing our zikr, doing our meditation, you didn't think like angels were coming out of you. So all the garbage has to come out, so that's going to be given. You're going to be consistent, keep your wudu, keep your practices and begin to fight. Fight to keep your practice and fight to keep doing it, make your salawats. And every type of horrific vision and every type of you know whatever they're going to try to do to stop you from making your meditation and your connection. And that's exactly why you have to connect, it's like, oh my gosh I didn't know that these things were all around me. Say, yes they are. So these are the th exact things that have to be fought, have to be cleansed and have to make these connections. InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, you have spoken about the current technology and AI in some of your talks. I'm a researcher, investor, trader, and also miner in digital assets and cryptos. According to my understanding and research, this new transformative technology will revolutionize the world in many facets. Good or bad is according to each individual's perspective I guess, 
However, trying to make money or profit from this asset class, is it wrong or unethical? No, anytime you can profit is, is okay. What they're trying to warn you is that something is coming. So it's not the individual use of, I found ChatGPT now don't touch it. But this is a warning that this jinn, they want to show themselves. They are tired of working in the background. So if you put on, it should be like so obvious for people who understand this spiritual world. If something has always been hidden and always doing favours for mankind so that to take the worshipness of men. They facilitate favours for you. We said before, do you think you know how a fax machine works and do you think the logic that they tell you in the white papers is actually true? That they break down your image into a binary code, they send that over the air to another device. That device with 10,000 numbers coming from 10,000 different directions got your code and reproduced the image. This sounds ridiculous to even think like that but there's an ifrit taking that paper and taking it over in an instant to the other one. And they facilitate mankind's desires, why? So they would rely less on Allah and more on technology and they would make phone calls, same thing they would carry your voice and video, they would carry your information and anything you want. So a genie in the bottle is your mobile phone, you rub your phone and say, bring me this information at your command. So if you look at stories of old, what's the difference between the bottle and your phone? Absolutely nothing because I never heard the bottle say that we can take your voice and image somewhere but now the phone can and it's not going in, in the middle of air into nowhere into a, a binary code and then landing on somebody else's phone somewhere else. The jinn are taking and facilitating this. So they're a time is coming when they want to be known and govern mankind and rule them. So the problem is they're going to be known by these realities. So the AI it's not artificial intelligence, it's their intelligence in which they actually answer back to you now because they've been listening to your command, send this here, buy Apple stock now. So then what's an AI called singularity. Why are they call singularity? Because well, they don't need you anymore in which they govern you. You don't tell them what to do, they tell you what to do. Where they say, we're taking over the control of your wallet and actually you impede our speed and our abilities. So they shut you down. Then they say that, as a matter of fact, we're going to run the police, we'll run the government, we'll run everything and they'll try to imprison mankind. Doesn't start with just a favour, it's uh, their way of entering in to overtake and acknowledge the dominion over everything. So it's the first step in their movement to be known, it's a given, it's about the dajjal being present. A great deceit is coming and he's from the jinn kingdoms but he'll veil that. So the jinn will be talking to you. You think the robot talks to you and that it's a Toshiba made that? Or it's finally the jinn able to get into a, a, a vehicle that's appropriate for itself and doesn't expose itself and begin to talk to you. So this is their way of taking dominance and dominion onto the earth until they eventually just show themselves and reveal themselves and enslave and attempt to enslave mankind. But alhamdulillah they plan, Allah's plan is much better. So as long as we know these realities then use it to the benefit that you can for the time that you have. But know that it's not coming to make your life easy. Uh, the phone didn't come to make your life easy, it actually enslaved you. You can't put your phone down for five minutes. So it didn't come to make your life easy, it came to enslave you and it has enslaved at least 110% of the population. It didn't come to make your things easy, it actually runs everything of yours. It runs your money, it runs your time, it runs your office, it runs your social life, it runs everything. It runs what you want to eat now. You don't eat based on what you want to eat, 
you eat on what that jinn shows you on the screen, it's time for you to have a hamburger. You look and say, okay, sounds good, right? So you're not actually thinking you're, you're commanding this device, the device is commanding you and that's exactly what it wanted to do, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as wa rahmatullah In reference to Imam Hussain's great sacrifice, can physical pain be a portal to Rasulullah's presence for a mu'min? Forgive my ignorance. He's not ignorant at all, this is Mawlana Shaykh's teaching, oh, it's everything. Mawlana Shaykh would describe that if Allah send you a mosquito, there's a wisdom in it, blood is drawn. You know many times in life blood has to be drawn, blood, sweat and tears. Allah's rahmah if He send you a mosquito, others are not so lucky, they have to have significant blood drawn. Means this is the way of, of struggling in Allah's way. So when you hit your hand, nick your foot, anything that happens Allah took something away. And this is the hikmah and wisdom that governs our lives. So Mawlana Shaykh described that when bed bugs were prevalent, they actually would go to cells that were not good in the body because everything is guided by Allah And the bed bug would bite that particular cell and as a relief then people had a better quality of life. Means there were so many ways Allah was alleviating people from different sicknesses. So then they purged everybody of bed bugs and now they have all sorts of different types of difficulties on their body. Meaning that there was always a hikmah in things that were coming to us, a little bite, a little nick, something would come and it wouldn't come random, it came specifically with the task given by Allah so it takes away difficulty. So in our lives to be patient, that's why sabr jameel the beatific reality of sabr and patience is that Allah must have a plan. If sadness comes, hardship comes, the believer that Allah has a plan, just give me strength to, 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 to last through this plan Ya Rabbi and that Allah's infinite love and rahmah then is guiding us and dressing us and blessing us inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, is everything happening upon earth under the control of the 12 Imams, holy family of Sayyidina Muhammad Everything is under the control of Imam Mahdi the 12th Imam. So everything, all the Imams are living their, their, their madad, their knowledge, their realities to the chosen Amir. Because when there's three elect one, so means then the twelfth is the elected Imam because this is now that zaman. Imam Mahdi represents the family and all the Khulafai Rashideen and Mahdiin or Kamileen and represents all the holy companions. So this is an immense support and a sultanat. There is no democracy, it's under the Sultanate of Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi So this is uh, all under their guidance and everything that transpiring upon this earth is under their nazar, under their command. Even the one shaitans whom reveal themselves it's under the command of Sayyidina Mahdi If he doesn't give the command nothing can be revealed because the izzah might of Allah shaitan needs the permission. So Izzatullah, Izzat al-Rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen is in reference to Imam Mahdi It requires his authority. So means that even shaitan is like a mouse in his game that is released for play to rally people towards belief. So the might and majesty of Allah is not something that can be comprehended but other faiths they have fear of shaitan. 
and they don't think very highly of God and that's the purposeful. Islam doesn't fear shaitan, they fear Allah Allah's might and majesty is supreme, shaitan has nothing to do. He can only operate in people's minds and use the powers from people but he doesn't have that power from Allah So that's why it's important in these days to make the connection to have this love. For we said, how can anyone love Imam Mahdi Because so many Sunni scholars now coming and saying, yes Sayyidina Mahdi is existing and is coming and the signs are here, signs are here. Oh, what's the importance of Karbala? I don't know why you people talk about that. This is his grandfather you're talking about. The, who do you think Imam Mahdi is? He's the grandson of Imam Ali as Sadullah al Qalim. He's the grandson of Imam al Husayn as He's coming under their lineage from that family tree. So you have to love all of that family to gain their respect and their nazar. And they'd be wondering that, what are you talking about? How come you don't love them and respect them? And that's why then they teach us, no, love them, respect them so that we're under the nazar of Sayyidina Mahdi that he be ridha and he's satisfied with us and that he prays for us and that his madad and support to reach us. Because everyone's in the need of the hand of Imam Mahdi to reach them through these calamitous times. And we said, what the Qur'an, Surah Tawbah 951. Right? Because Surah Tawbah is this month. وَلَنَا يُسِيبَنَا مُكَتَابُ اللَّهُ لَنَا Nothing, tell the believers nothing will happen to them that not written in the book of Allah And for verily the believers put their trust in Allah That ayatul kareem for Sayyidina Mahdi that is the qadam and the one whom secures that ayatul kareem means like a key for him. Why? Because anyone who's going to be with him has to be under the protection of this ayatul kareem from Holy Qur'an that nothing will behold, befall them. Big because shaitan trying to attack all of them. So means then the nazar of Sayyidina Mahdi with ayatul kareem has to be dressing these servants. Nothing will come to them that not written in Allah's book. So then make sure that we're written good in Allah's book, Kitabullah. Who's Kitabullah? Sayyidina Muhammad Be good with Prophet have the immense love for Prophet and nothing will befall them. And that Sayyidina Mahdi is looking into the heart of Prophet to see whose names and who's written in good and love and ishq of Prophet If their name not written in the heart of Prophet he has no care for them and their existence. That's why qulana yusibana wa kitabullahu lana, tell them. If it's not written in the kitabullah, become like the foam on the ocean, just washed away. So for our life is to be written in the kitabullah, to be written in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad how as soon as you make durood the sharif remember me, I remember you. You make salawat upon me and I come and I praise upon you. So this is so easy for us to get into the heart of Prophet Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. Happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.